So today's video is going to focus on anatomy and where things are located. So not really any physiology about how things are working. So we're going to start first with body cavities. And we're going to start with what we call the dorsal cavity. If you remember from our last video, right, dorsal is posterior. So the dorsal cavity is going to be the cavity on the back side of the body. And if we look at our diagram here, it is this cavity here that is kind of this reddish orangish part, okay? And it's broken into the cranial cavity here in the head. Remember, uh, cranial is head. So the cranial cavity there in the head, which is gonna hold the brain, and this vertebral canal, which is this orange part here, headed all the way down in the middle of the spine, which is gonna hold the spinal cord. So you'll notice these cavities are gonna be spaces because we have to have some hollow space within the body to be able to hold the parts. And so in the head, we have the cranial cavity that holds the brain. And in the back headed down our spine, we have the vertebral canal, which holds the spinal cord. So all of that's the dorsal cavity. You'll see if you look at this diagram here, you can see how they're connected right here. There, um, there's no barrier between the two. So that's why the whole thing is called the dorsal cavity and, the two, and it is split into these two regions. As we move to the front of the body, we get the ventral cavity. Again, ventral is anterior or the front. So the ventral cavity is gonna be along the front of the body here. Again, an open space to be able to fill it with organs and such. And so the ventral cavity is going to be broken into the thoracic cavity, which is this, lar which is this large cavity here at the top. The thoracic cavity is going to be above the diaphragm. So the diaphragm, which is the muscle that helps you breathe, you can see it marked right here on your, uh, on your diagram there. So the diaphragm uh, does separate the ventral cavity into basically a top and a bottom, into the thoracic cavity and then the abdominal pelvic cavity. In the thoracic cavity, it's further broken down into what we call the right pleural, the right pleural is gonna contain the lungs. For those of you that have taken medical terminology, a, there's my right lung in that right pleural cavity. Therefore, my left pleural cavity is going to contain my left lung. And the mediastinum is gonna be in the middle between the two, a, and that's gonna contain the heart. A, it'll contain the pericardial cavity there, which will contain the heart. So ventral cavity above the diaphragm is thoracic, which is broken into the right pleural, the mediastinum, and the left pleural. And again, we've got lungs, heart, lungs. The abdominal pelvic cavity then is going to be below the diaphragm. So basically, this is what we think of as our stomach. Okay? And our stomach is going to be down below the diaphragm. Okay, and this is gonna include the area in the abdomen as well as the pelvis. So you can see in the picture, it's in this light blue, and then it's a, the pelvic cavity is in a darker blue there. Basically, when you hit the top of the hip bones, okay, it becomes pelvic cavity. So abdominal cavity is what we would consider our stomach area, and then pelvic cavity is down within the pelvic bones here, within the hip bones here. In the abdominal cavity, we're gonna have things like our stomach, our large intestine, small intestine. This is where you could find the liver, the gallbladder, the spleen, all of those kind of major organs are gonna be in that abdominal cavity. Kidneys, down in the pelvic cavity, this is where we're gonna find the urinary bladder, that holds the urine until you're ready to release it from your body, as well as reproductive organs. So this is where the uterus would be for females, ovaries, right? So bladder and reproductive organs are going to be down in the pelvic cavity, which again are divisions of the abdominal pelvic cavity, which is a smaller portion of the ventral cavity. So this abdominal pelvic region can be divided two different ways. And we're gonna look at both ways. We're gonna start with the simpler way, which is divided into four quadrants or four areas. And you'll notice they're named pretty simply, 
right? Right upper, left upper, left lower, right lower. Also pay attention to the right and the left. Realize that the light right and the left is referring to the patient's right and left, right? Their face would be facing you. So that's their right side and their left side. Okay, so right upper quadrant, right lower, left upper, left lower. We form these by making a transverse umbilical line. Okay, so transverse means across, right? If we think back to our planes, right? A transverse plane divided things into top and bottom. So there's a transverse umbilical line. It's going right through that area right there, which is called the umbilicus and also known as your belly button. Okay, and then you're gonna have a sagittal umbilical line. Remember, sagittal divides into right and left portions. So we're gonna have an up and down or vertical line here that goes again through the belly button or the umbilicus and divides it into right and left. So pretty easy um, to mark you know, which quadrant there. Easy for the patient to understand, quick and easy for the doctor. Another way that you can divide them is a little bit more specific. It divides the, the abdominal pelvic cavity into the nine regions. And you'll notice that these nine regions are a little bit smaller than the quadrants. Okay? And so it is um, basically being a little bit more specific for the doctor. It can be a little bit slower, but it also helps narrow the focus. You are going to be expected to know these nine regions. Okay? You may want to um, you know, be sketching them out to help you practice them. Basically, it's a tic-tac-toe board, and you can label the tic-tac-toe board. Again, remember the patient is facing you, and therefore it's referring to their right and to their left. So as we go through these, we start here on the right in the hypochondriac area. If you know your vocabulary, hypo is below. Chondro is cartilage or ribs, right? And so if this is my, these, car, these ribs right here on the bottom are made of cartilage. Okay, so I'm below these ribs. So my right hypochondriac region is this right here. In the middle of this top row is my epigastric region. Epi means a pond, right? And gastric is stomach. So this area is right on top of the stomach here. And then I have my left hypochondriac area. So the area on my left side that is below those cartilage ribs. Going across the middle row here, I have a right lumbar region. The region of our lower back here is the lumbar area. So there's a right lumbar, umbilical, my belly button would be right here in the middle. Okay? And then again, I go back to my left lumbar region. And then down at the bottom in the last row, I have the right iliac region. This bone right here okay, is my ilium bone. That's my hip bone, the point of my hip there. Then I have a hypogastric region right in the middle. Again, hypo is below, so I'm way below the stomach here. And then again, I go back to a left iliac region on the left side. So we have these nine parts that you're going to need to know those nine parts. We get those nine point parts by making two midclavicular lines, right? So mid would be in the middle. Clavicular would be our clavicle which is our collarbone. So if you trace these lines, let me switch to red, maybe see a little bit more. So if I trace these lines up, they go about through the middle of my clavicle. So I have two midclavicular lines, and then I make a subcostal line. Remember, sub is below, costal is rib. So I have a subcostal line, which is going to be this one right here that makes the top of my tic-tac-toe. Ooh, I lost it. Let me just draw your tic-tac-toe here. So this one right here is going to be my subcostal line. And then my bottom line is going to be made from a trans tubercular line. Remember, trans is a cross and a tubercle is a little bump on the bone. So this bottom line here goes through these two bumps on the bone right here. So I get that trans tubercular line. So that's how I make my tic-tac-toe board on a body. Again, and your expectation will be that you can identify these nine regions. So something else that you guys are gonna be asked to memorize is gonna be landmarks. 
You're going to get blank copies of these diagrams so you can practice, 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 practice. Okay. You're also going to be expected um, to do a quick flip grid on yourself, pointing these out, but you'll have a time limit. And we'll explain that project a little bit more, but that's going to be considered a major grade. We need to be able to very quickly move through landmarks. I'm not going to point every landmark out on your list because that's actually not helpful to you. It is better for you to go in and you to look them up yourselves. It will help you remember them better. Um, but I will point out a few so you can understand what I'm talking about. So you're going to have one diagram here that's going to be anterior or ventral landmarks. Right, remember, ventral is anterior. So these are going to be landmarks on the front. So for example, you'd be expected to know that the eyes are the orbital region or that the inside of your elbow right here where they draw blood from is anti-cubital. Okay, your kneecap here is patellar. Okay, so again, you will have a list of these. And again, we'll talk about this during live class, but the expectation will be that you will go through and you label these diagrams on your own. You can print them and you can label them. You can uh, put them into Kami and you can label them electronically and keep reusing them. Okay, um, let's look at some posterior examples. So on the posterior or dorsal side, you're going to be expected to label certain diagrams there as well. For example, the region right here at your shoulder blade is the scapular. And the back of your kneecap, so you have the front, which was the patellar, the back of your knee is the popliteal. Down at the back of your heel, okay, that's going to be calcaneal. So again, these are just some examples of what you're going to be expected to do. It is going to be really important. This is um, kind of a trial by fire with the, with the memorization part. Okay? To become a doctor, to become a nurse, there is a significant amount of information that you just have to memorize. You can't have a patient come into the ER, or come into your office, and you have to say, hold on a second, let me look all these things up. There are certain things that just need to come very quickly and, very, and come very fast. And that's going to be things like this, okay? These different body areas, these different body landmarks, different um, body positions, that kind of thing. So it's going to be, it's a lot of vocabulary, okay? Um, you could probably practice some on Quizlet. If you're a Quizlet person, like I said, you can copy, copy. You can do the, cam you can upload these into Cami as often as you want. You can make flashcards, you can print them, but it is going to require time, okay? We'll do some practice things with them in class. You know, play some cahoots, uh, get any questions, clarifications, that kind of thing. Um, you know, just work with them some in class. But again, it will be a time investment on your part to make sure you get them memorized.